what happened in 1980 in the United States with regards to uh, research, invention, university and private uh, partnerships and, and what benefit it gave uh, uh, as you have observed since then? Well, in 1980, we passed the, the act known as the Bay Dole, B-A-Y-H Dole. They were the two senators uh, who were the sponsors of a bill that for research funded by the federal government, the university uh, is authorized to take title to that research from the inventor. Because prior to Bay Dole, when government funded research at the university, the government owned the invention. And what we found was the government isn't in the business of commercializing inventions. They don't even know all the things that industry knows about how to get the kind of inventions that we do at Johns Hopkins, which are early stage biomedical inventions, how to get those into the marketplace. So what happened was, and there's such, there's such, an, invent, there's such an investment of money and, and time that's needed. So the federal government, when they owned it and nobody could get it exclusively, People weren't willing to put the money into the products to, to create products from the new inventions. So when Baidol was passed and the university started to take title to that, to that uh, research and those inventions, it created the, the industry known as University Technology Transfer. And that industry has been very successful. Today there are more than 4,000 companies that have been created. There are, there are over 10,000 products in the marketplace that are the direct result of that. And $16 billion, more than $16 billion has been raised to support additional research because in my goal, we're required, we, we have the authority to take title, but we can't just take title and sit on it. We must market it. We must make sure it gets to be a product. We can't give it to some drug manufacturer, for example, who just wants to sit on it and do nothing because if they create a product, it will impact one of their other products. We have to give it to a partner will develop it and then when we receive money we must share that money with the inventor and we must apply any excess money back to the research uh, so it has been it has been extremely successful in our country uh, and it, it is it is the only way that anybody has really discovered to take early stage technologies of the kind that are developed at universities and provide a way that they can get out into the marketplace uh, the level of innovation and the level of uh, uh, applied innovation in the marketplace in the in the US is uh, almost unparalleled in the in the rest of the world um, I think, uh, given your description, you would recommend other countries to take on a similar uh, legislation or similar approach. Uh, since the 25, 28 years, um, has it been the case uh, that other countries, as you know, have adopted this and been successful with it? Well, they, they have. I mean, England adopted some, a similar ruling in, I think, 1985, and more and more countries are doing it. Japan just passed their equivalent of Baidol three or four or five years ago, and, and what we have seen in my office is, is a, uh, a series of visits by various Japanese interests to learn how we do it and what we do, because for the very first time, their universities are having the authority and the ability to take title to these inventions and now they have to then manage them. And management of inventions is a big process. You look at Johns Hopkins where I work, we have about 40 people involved. Our patent budget is $6.7 million this year and our operating budget is about $5 million. And so, you know, it is a large and complex operation that requires professional people you know, trained in the business and experienced to really be effective. Um, uh, at, at doing it, and I, and I see around the world that more and more countries are looking into this and, and adopting a rule of this nature. Baidol represented an evolutionary step uh, in the way people do research and invention, and that uh, uh, the fruits of these are uh, being then applied for the benefit of society. Um, if you looked uh, forward instead of looking back, uh, uh, what would you see as a, a, a possible or even important further step in this evolutionary process? One of the things that we have to do is spend, be willing to spend more money at the initial research level on what, what is commonly referred to as translational research. The typical funding that's available to universities from the government and even from the charitable entities that fund our research is research that takes you up to the point of initial discovery. But then from that point on, there's a total reliance on the marketplace to take that discovery and to move it along on its evolutionary stage into a product. And when you consider the products that, that we develop, the kinds of things that we do at Johns Hopkins, the ones that are either therapeutic or diagnostics or 
or other methods of controlling and impacting disease. From the time of our initial discovery to the time of having a product, this was some, something in the nature of, of 8 to 12 years, an investment of, of a half a billion dollars or more. And we would benefit, and it, it's, hard, it's hard for those companies to look at our early stage and decide what to take and how to take it on. We would benefit greatly from both federal funding and <clears throat> charitable institution funding, and even some, some industry funding in areas that they're interested in. Of, of small amounts of additional money, because it doesn't take very much, to take a product from the early discovery stage to move it along to where you can really see if, if this product is worth putting in additional development money and get and get uh, business interested. <clears throat> a good example is a potential molecule that might uh, be a cure for a disease or impact a disease. We discover the molecule, we test it on, on the disease process, we find that it works. But then, you need to have some animal studies, you need to have some toxicology studies before you can typically get a, even a small startup company interested in licensing that and moving it along. So many discoveries at universities that could be the next breakthrough don't get anywhere for lack of two hundred fifty to three hundred fifty thousand dollars. And we need more of that. That would be a big difference in how we how we do business, I think. Thank you very much. You're welcome.